today we're going to be talking about self-efficacy and the importance of self-efficacy. Now, self-efficacy is very crucial in terms of behavioral change and it is almost always included in very influential behavioral change theories and interventions. The definition of self-efficacy is a person's level of confidence in his capability to control his behavior. And the people who came up with this definition is Calder, Holscher and Perry in 2015 in a scientific study. So to put that into a context, it's to which degree do I believe that I can stop smoking, cut down on my sweet intake, or maybe be more mindful when eating and not use your phone as much. So I've put a diagram of self-efficacy in here, which just highlights the key features. Here you can see that Bandura has done quite a few research on this, and then there's Redmond, but I'm going to be using Kelder and Holcher and Perry from 2015. Self-efficacy should always be assessed in terms of a specific behavior and not as a general assessment since your efficacy can differ towards different topics that remain under the same subject. An example of this could be that you believe that you can lead a healthy lifestyle because you're able to cut back on your sweet intake, with which contains a lot of added sugar, but you don't believe that you can quit smoking. Even though that these are under the same subject of healthy living, you have different self-efficacies towards the topics. Now, we've discussed in our theory of planned behavior and our integrated behavioral models in the past two videos, there was a section called perceived control. Now, self-efficacy and perceived control are not the same thing. Perceived control relates to barriers or facilitators that you perceive in the environment to either be helping you or going against you in terms of carrying out a specific behavior, whereas self-efficacy is the feeling of, I can do this, I can do this specific behavior. But the feeling for the person feeling those two things, perceived control and self-efficacy, it will be the same. But if you talk to a health professional like a nutritionist or a person with a bachelor degree in global health and nutrition, the term does not mean the same thing. So the terms that Kelder uses, uh, Kelder et al, in his scientific study from 2015, the terms vary a bit in text, but they sort of say the same thing. So here, Bandura calls it performance outcomes, where I would call it previous master experiences. And these previous master experiences help develop skills and outcome expectations. These outcome expectations can both be positive and negative, and what you believe to be the outcome of a said behavior. It's important to say that even though the previous mastery experiences may not be the same, the feeling is quite similar and it can be important to highlight to um, a client or yourself and to build a bridge between these two similar feelings. So let's say that you've been trying to stop smoking and You've tried for a year and it was going super well and you fall in and have a cigarette and you tell me that, damn it, I smoked. Ah, I, you know, I've been going for a year and then I just had to go and have a cigarette. And then it's important to highlight that, yes, you may have fallen back into the habit of smoking, but you stayed off of it for a year. And that's highlighting someone's previous mastery experiences to show them you can actually do this. The second one is vicarious experiences. And this is kind of similar to the previous mastery experiences, except that you're not the one having these experiences. You are experiencing another person's experiences and you are looking to them as a role model. And the more the person that we look towards as a role model resembles us, the more effective this works. So if it were to be effective on me, the person would have to be roughly the same age as me. They would have the gender would have to be a woman um, and maybe even at the same position or life situation as me, like at uni studying global health and nutrition. So the more similar your role model is to you, the more effective their previous master experiences will be 
to you because you can relate and think, oh, well, if she can do it, so can I. The one that Redmond calls verbal persuasion is what I would like to call social persuasion. And in its simplicity, it's the ability to carry out a behavior as well as knowing the importance of carrying out the behavior. And it's so this importance of knowing of doing the behavior is when other people tell you it's really good for you. It's kind of like teaching someone but also encouraging them. It's not belittling them. That works quite the opposite. But it's giving them the encouragement to to go forth and reminding them it's important to do it and cheering them on. The fourth and last one that Bandura calls physiological feedback is what Kelder calls emotional arousal. Now, there are two stages of this, or two things related to the physiological feedback slash emotional arousal. It is both the present feelings that are completely unrelated to the situation and the specific behavior. It's what you're feeling right now and how that's affecting what you want to do or the behavior that you want to carry out. And then the second stage of the physiological feedback or emotional arousal is the feelings that you think you will feel or experience in the present situation or doing that specific behavior. With the knowledge of this self-efficacy, it's very important to take it and use it to your own advantage to highlight which areas you may not feel as confident. And then you can build a bridge between those two areas and kind of make sure that when you're going into it and, and trying to start this behavioral change, that you're giving yourself the best odds of succeeding and then if it doesn't work out comforting yourself and saying it's okay I know what to do I know the action plan and I can change things around it's not always easy but sometimes change is worth it thank you so much guys for watching I hope you learned a little bit if, as always if you have any questions pop them down in the comment section below or find me on Instagram or TikTok I'll see you later bye bye Thank you so much guys for watching. I hope you learned a little bit. If, as always, if you have any questions, pop them down in the comment section below or find me on Instagram or TikTok. I'll see you later. Bye bye.